okay, so today I'm going to be talking about the conservation strategies for uh, Hector's dolphins. Uh, I'm going to be talking about what a Hector's dolphin is, uh, the way you can kind of ID like them in size relation to other dolphins. Uh, we're also going to talk about threats and then the conservation strategies that the New Zealand government have put into place uh, to help conserve these dolphins. And then I'll be looking at the environmental, economical, political and cultural considerations um, for conserving these dolphins. So Hector's yeah. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so dolphins, uh, they're the world's smallest oceanic dolphin um, and females only reach up to about 1.4 metres in length. Uh, they weigh about 50 kilos and their males are often smaller than the female counterparts, so they're usually 10 kilograms less, about 1.2 metres in length. Um, there's two subspecies, so you have the Hector's dolphins in the South Island and the Marrow dolphins in the North Island. Um, I couldn't find the comparison for Hector's dolphins, but the dorsal fin is very similar, so you can see it in comparison to a common dolphin. Um, so this is the size relation, so obviously the dolphin is quite big. Um, a bottlenose dolphin is quite a few, I think it's like two metres long, and then obviously the, the Hector's dolphins are quite small, almost porpoise like. Um, so they're quite easy to spot in um, New Zealand waters due to their quite distinctive markings. So they have a white underside and grey markings all along the back and then the dorsal fin is curved like I previously said. So where can they be found? So they, they live in coastal waters around 15 kilometres off the coast. Um, they, during the summer months they stay quite close together in packs and work together, um, usually along the northeastern coast of the South Island. Um, during the winter month, they do have a spread round to the western coast and down to the very far south. So that's where they live. Um, so this is kind of like the density. So you can see that all around this uh, peninsula here, which is called Banks Peninsula. Um, a little bit down here and along the uh, western coast, but not so much along the north. So the status, in 2008, uh, oh sorry, go back, in 1988 they didn't have enough data to be able to classify these dolphins um, with a status, they didn't really know much about them. However, two, uh, two years later they had enough data to realise that they were actually vulnerable. Um, moving on from there, so a few years later they realised that these animals were a bit hit and miss, they didn't know if the populations were declining or declining. And then again in 96, so two years after that one, they were back to vulnerable, and then going on four years, they've been endangered since 2000 to present. There's currently around uh, 7,000 um, in their population left. Um, however, the population has been on a decline recently, despite conservation. Um, so they are keeping an eye on that. So threats, I'm sorry for the photos. The threats. <laughs> So tourism and boat propellers. So this is a photo of um, a Hector's dolphin where the boat propellers gone through. Um, unfortunately, this is quite common due to where they live in the Banks Peninsula. They do have quite a lot of tourism in that area due to its um, its aesthetic of the area, and a lot of people like to get day boats and go out. And obviously, they don't, they don't know that these dolphins live quite close in shallow waters. Um, fishing, by catching gillnets. So this is. It's not very clear on here, but this is the foot of a gillnet and um, three dolphins wrapped up, unfortunately. Um, they do come into contact with fisheries quite often. Again, when they live in such um, shallow and coastal waters, they do encounter a lot of problems there. Um, um, one of the main threats to their, their species is their slow uh, reproduction rates. So females, females at the age of seven can only produce um, one calf every two to three years. So if that calf is unsuccessful, unfortunately, then they rapidly decline in population and it takes quite a long time for them to increase. And pollutants, um, again, noise pollution, plastic pollution and PCBs have been a massive problem, particularly PCBs, um, mainly because once it's in the system of the, the dolphin or the calf, it can affect how long they live for. Um, so a lot of calves where they're being brought up on milk that contains PCBs they are usually unsuccessful unfortunately. So how to protect? Um, this was an image that the New Zealand government released. Um, it was 
ways in which they wanted to protect and where particularly they wanted to protect um, to help these dolphins. So 2008, 2012, there wasn't much change, but um, this was kind of like where they were focusing on so the green areas, like the coast. Um, and the next step was that they were planning to kind of protect all around where they live. And obviously up with, with the Maori dolphins as well. So the strategies in place. So in 1988, when they were considered um, insufficient evidence, Banks Peninsula, which was the big bubble that I pointed out on the map, um, was declared the first marine mammal sanctuary and was later extended in 2008. Um, in 1998, research was carried out by the conservation which found that they were in a serious decline and for that reason the marine mammal sanctuary was extended a little bit further. In 2016, one of the main cruise ships that works in Banks Peninsula decided to work more with the conservation of dolphins and ecotourism as opposed to kind of taking people out and making money off people. Um, their revenue that they make from people taking them out to teach them how to like, swim with dolphins or learn about dolphins around the world, revenue goes straight back into conservation projects uh, which can further fund uh, more conservation. In 2018, uh, the New Zealand government closed areas of fishing, so 8,000 kilometres of trawl restrictions were set in place along the coast. Uh, that's along the eastern coast. And 15,000 15, kilometres of set net was banned. Uh, they didn't allow people to leave their nets out in the water and leave them. They could only trawl them behind the fishery boats. Uh, so this is Banks Peninsula here. This is where the Black Cat cruises worked from in this main boat, which is around Makaroa. Um, so that's on the kind of mid-eastern point of the South Island. Um, and this is a photo to kind of represent where they're focusing on the set name. Unfortunately, it's not down here where it should be. They're kind of focusing up here, um, which is great. So economical considerations. So marine protected areas cost the governments, um, this is kind of globally, around 5 to 19 billion annually. Uh, to run, that's making sure everything's safe, no one's doing what they shouldn't, policing it, um, which can be oh, that's very expensive where they get the money from. Um, the, they've also had a loss in the fishery industry due to the, the restrictions, it means that people aren't going out as much and fishing. However, it does provide jobs and tourism, so if, if the fisheries are not going out anymore, the fishermen can then kind of transform their boats or um, move their jobs into a sector where they can actually conserve the species instead. Um, ecotourism also provides Acro with millions, um, millions of dollars a, each year um, to the local community which can then be re reimbursed into conservation of these species. Um, so economically it's very important to actually conserve the hectic dolphins. So environmental considerations. Uh, although ecotourism is really good, it does lead to an increase in noise pollution and boat pollution. Obviously, if you're going out in boats to teach people about these dolphins, the consequences will follow. Um, it does, however, increase, um, with the marine protected area, it does increase uh, biodiversity, which can lead to an increase in population. It would also provide more of a safety um, barrier for the calves to be able to grow up in a safe environment as opposed to being kind of caught at a young age. And it does provide jobs again in the sector. Um, so political, political and cultural considerations. Um, the Hector's dolphins aren't considered much of a cultural importance. Uh, the Maori people don't, they've never had kind of um, systems where they'll hunt the animal for um, any reason. They're actually kind of like leave the dolphins alone. Um, so to New Zealand, as they're endemic to New Zealand, they are quite important in terms of conservation. New Zealand kind of view this animal as a species in which they want to put across to the, to the other governments to say that we're, we're protecting Hector's dolphins, similar to the WWF and the, the panda. Um, so. so is it effective? Um, since the New Zealand government have set in set net bans and trawling restrictions, it has led to a slow incline. Obviously, that's fighting other threats as well, which can be quite difficult for them to address. Uh, there's been less fatalities caused by humans, so it's more um, natural causes of death to the animals, which is a positive. 
Um, the government have also implemented um, rope pedal guards because the money that they're making from ecotourism they can then reimburse to the people that own boats and protect the boat propellers so it doesn't hurt the animal. Um, but the threats persist. And that's me down. Um, uh, I did have a question. Um, there isn't anything. There's sort of uh, sort of these by by, by catch reduction devices for dolphin. Not that I found. No, just, just there's not so much. They just kind of want to restrict them as much as they can. Um, okay. And I mean, does it? Is there much resistance from the fishermen? Do they can they see that actually they're probably making more money from being doing boat trips than they are? Um, there, well, Black Cat Cruise is the only cruise ship that's okay. legally allowed to go out and teach people about the Hector's Dolphins conservation. So uh, there is, I suppose, there is a small conflict. Um, however, I suppose if they say, look, dolphins are declining, this is because of you, then they're usually quite, they can stand back. What thoughts? Even, even if your heritage is, is your fishing, I'm sure you can see it's, it must be easier to make money driving a boat with people in it mm. than it is to go fishing. But yeah. People are stuck in their ways. Um, uh, does it feel like the New Zealand government are, 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 are you know, quite are helping this process? They're, they're, they're quite pro being proactive. In this. Yeah, the New Zealand government are a very green government. Um, they do implement bans on, say, pollution from uh, more terrestrial things like river pollution and stuff, so that obviously helps them go into the marine environment. Um, they are constantly tackling, I know in the recent years with the new president or prime minister, um, they are tackling quite a lot of um, natural problems, such as pollution. Thank you very much.